What's up guys and welcome to the live stream. We are at Den and DJ World Headquarters here in Cumberland, Rhode Island. We're back from NAMM. We announced a beautiful product, the Prime 4. So today we're here to talk about all the questions that you wanna know. Prime 4 is a fully featured DJ console which features four channels of standalone mixing, meaning you can mix entirely on four decks without the need of a computer. There's so many features to talk about, but we really wanna know what you guys are interested in learning. So we're standing by, waiting for some questions, and while we do, maybe I'll just walk you through a few of my favorite, or some of my uh, features that I really use often. So, if we're on the touch screen here, I'm gonna pull up the, uh, the main library. And if I go through a couple of my lists here, some of these don't have too many tracks, but if I jump into a big, let's see my parent, folder here. I've got a lot of tracks there. So that would take some time to, to typically scroll through that. What's cool is I can just grab from the outside and pull in, and then I can quickly scroll down through all the list much faster. That way I can fine tune and find what I'm looking for at a, at a much faster rate. That feature is also available by just holding down the uh, shift button and using your scroll encoder to quickly jump by pages. So again, that will allow you to quickly jump through and find your music really, really quickly. Another one of my favorite features is the ability to dial in on my tracks that I'm looking for when I'm mixing. So if I uh, click on the magnifying glass, it brings me into the filter window. And from here, I can kind of dial in and say, maybe I'm mixing at a particular BPM, uh, maybe 119. And so all the results that are returned here are within three, plus or minus three dB or plus or minus three BPM from 119. And then I can go from here and I can sort by key and I can see all those tracks that will mix nicely and also mix in key. Uh, if I'm looking in this list, list here, I can also just quickly add to a prepare folder. So maybe I'll play this track, but I wanna play it later. So I'll just swipe it over to the left. You can see that it was added to the prepare folder. Let me grab a couple more, swipe it over. And then I'll show you all those are stored right here on this third icon down. This is my prepare list. So as I'm taking requests throughout the evening, I can quickly find what I'm looking for, swipe to the left, and just add it to the prepare list and play it or save it for later. Let's see, another one of my uh, favorite features is the ability to quickly jump into the source. So with a standalone player like this with lots of media um, inputs, you're likely to change sources multiple times throughout the evening. So there's a couple ways to get there. You can hold down the view button and it will take you to our glorious uh, menu page. And from here, you just tap on the source. And you can see here that I have an internal hard drive as well as an SD card in the bay. But I can quickly just jump to that without holding down the view by pressing shift on the controller and then the eject button. And that will also bring me to my source page. Pressing the eject button without the shift just brings you to your eject screen where you can actually eject your sources. So I've got my source already in there. I don't want to change anything. We can go into the uh, global pull-up window and there's some quantize value and, qu and continue here. So as you notice right on the bottom there, there's a little icon. You just tap that. That's going to give you your stop time where you can increase the playback speed. Like a turntable. You can extend that out even longer or make it really quick. Here's also where you'll find your quantize and your continue mode. Continue mode is pretty much just gonna keep your songs that are in that current list playing over and over until you decide to stop them. I don't want the quantize or continue on, so I'm gonna close those out and then just pop that menu down. Quick way to search on the Prime 4, just call up your search icon here. And as soon as you tap on that magnifying glass, you can quickly find what you're looking for. You've got this nice keyboard on display where you can just search for anything you're looking for. No returns there, Let's see. DJS, maybe I'm looking for too much. And I've got that resu result there and all these others as well. So I can load any one of those to the deck. You can cut quickly just clear that out. You can also connect a USB keyboard to quickly search with a more tactile feel. Uh, this is your playlist here on the left page. You've got all of your different playlists, depending on how you organize and structure your music. 
but you can also use the crate system as well, which is a little bit more robust, giving you lots more ways to sort and find your music. All right, so it looks like we've got our first question coming in from Facebook. So Ryan wants to know, how big of a solid state hard drive can you put into the unit? He uses MP4s, so his library for searching is just over three terabytes. It's a great question. So at launch, what we're gonna support is up to one terabyte. Um, you know, you could probably use a larger drive in there, but we're supporting one terabyte because we know that's where the best experience is. Again, you can use that larger drive. You just might notice slower speeds and some of your res uh, return results when you're searching for your music. But I'm sure it will handle it just fine. You just have to give it a try. So yeah, three terabytes. It will likely work without a problem. But again, you know, one terabyte is what we recommend for the best possible experience. All right, so let's jump back into it. I wanna show you guys how to quickly edit. So, if you wanna edit something on the fly, you've got this icon at the top, this little pencil. What that allows me to do is create crates on the fly. So I can just tap this little icon here, create a crate. So let's just call this live stream. Create it, and then pick all the, the tracks that I want. So just grab a few of these. If it's got this little check here, that means you've selected it. And then all you need to do is tap hold and then just drag them over into the live stream crate. And they were added there. From here, you can also delete or remove songs from particular crates just by swiping to the left. You can also delete and remove playlisting crates by grabbing on the playlist or crate name and swiping to the left. Once you're done editing, just close out the pencil icon and you're back to your normal view. We go to our live stream and we can see that we've got all those tracks that we just added there. That's great for, um, you know, if you've got your music prepared or you've got a hard drive installed in the Prime 4, this will allow you to kind of configure your music, prep, uh, prepare a playlist and get everything ready for your gig on site. All right, so we got our next question coming in from Facebook again. It's Freddie and he wants to know, can I add an external drive to this and if yes, how many can I connect? Absolutely, you can connect up to four external USB uh, drives because you've got two USBs on the top and you've got two more on the rear. So you've got lots of media options. Again, you've got the, the four USBs, you've got an SD card, and you also have the uh, 2.5 inch SATA drive bay below so you can install it and take your music everywhere you go. Uh, next thing I wanna show you is uh, how you can actually sort the music. So if you're familiar with our Prime series, you can, uh, you've seen how you could sort here by album artist name, um, BPM, but you can also now sort by a lot more options here. So we've added the ability to sort by uh, rating, the year, the genre, the date added, and comment, as well as the, uh, the standard for sorting options. And what's great about these options is once you select one, so for instance, I'll select year, now that I've selected year, you can see the year is displayed underneath the key there. So again, if I change that information, if I say sort by um, maybe genre, you'll see now that I've got my genre in there as well. So I've got deep house, the future bass, and all those. And then you can sort, you can change the sort order from descending to ascending just by clicking on the little triangle. Uh, we got our next question. Angelo asks, is it possible to connect a wireless keyboard Great question. Uh, it, I'm like, it's likely that the USB keyboards, or I'm sorry, wireless keyboards will be supported, but right now we're supporting wire, wired keyboards, but if you have one of the 2.4 uh, gigahertz Logitech uh, keyboards, it's likely to work as well. So yeah, great question. We will support the wired keyboards for sure, but I'm 99% sure that the 2.4 gigahertz wireless uh, keyboards will also be supported. All right, so what else can I show you? We've got a couple of tracks here. We're looking at just a two deck view right now, but we can extend that if we load. Right now it's kind of simplified because I'm only working with two decks, but if I want to load another track, I can swipe it to the right, and now I'm presented with options here to load to three and four. And only when those decks are actually loaded, that's when you'll see those displayed there. So we've loaded, and now we can see all four decks there, beautifully laid out, um, cascading over the channel strip view. All right, so our next question coming in. Sylvan asks, is there a matching track functionality? Example, a track is loaded to deck one, 
I would like to see if other tracks have been played with this one before. Not currently, but that's a great feature and you know, absolutely something we could possibly do in the future. So it's a great suggestion. We're gonna take all these notes from the live stream today and add them to our feature request bin. So if you guys have requests you know, of features that currently aren't on the product, we'd love to hear them. Again, we make this stuff for you guys, so keep them coming at us. If it's possible, we'll definitely try and get it in there for you for sure. So great question and thanks for asking. Um, going back over, we've got our four decks in view now. Let me just get another track loaded over to deck four. Again, you can swipe to the right to load to the deck and it will present you with which one of the four decks you load to. You can also just quickly load by using the select encoder on the center of the browse area and then just load to the active deck by pressing the load. I've got pause protect there, so as soon as I stop the deck, press the load and we've loaded to the deck. You can disable that feature within the preferences. And so now we've got four decks loaded. You can grab on any one of the waveforms and you can swipe in to expand it to see a little bit more of the information there. Next feature I wanna show you is the ability to key change. So with Prime 4, we're giving you guys the ability to key change tracks in real time. So all you have to do is tap on the key. At the top of the display here, you now see the key signature is displayed in the Camelot format as 8A. But we can quickly jump up by semitone. You can get out of it. And then you just press key lock on the control surface to reset the deck back to its original key state. You can also key sync with a corresponding deck. So let's get something loaded up on the other deck. Let me go to my cleared music. Load to deck. Hey, so let's get this guy going, sync him up. I'm gonna beat jump forward into this guy so we got a little bit more harmonies going on. And all you have to do to key sync is just hold down the uh, key lock button for two seconds. And then we've mapped, we're both at 8A now, so everything sounds pretty good together. Let's audition just the left deck. And then go back over the right. And then bring them back together. So the ability to key sync on the fly is pretty powerful. You know, it will allow you to kind of remix things in ways that you've never really remixed them before on the fly from a single unit. Again, this is without the use of any computer, so it's pretty powerful stuff. All right, let's take a look and see if we've got another question coming in. All right, so yeah, we've got some requests to talk about some of the effects. So I'm just gonna rewind this track a little bit. Just jump back here. Just get a little loop going so we can uh, preview some of the effects. All right, so I've got a 16 beat loop going here. And let's go with our reverb. So the fourth control over on the very far right is gonna be your wet and dry. And then the third control in from the outside or the third control from the inside is your frequency. So you're really applying the effects to a particular frequency band. And when this, uh, the meter here is full in the dead center, that's saying that you're, you're applying the effect to all frequency bands. So typically with reverbs or delays, you wanna adjust it so it's just hitting the high so it doesn't sound too muddy. So we'll add a little more wet and dry, a little decay. You can also freeze the effect, which is cool. So I'm just gonna add full decay and then freeze it. So the freeze parameter kind of allows you to get in and out of a track quickly by using the effect, which is pretty cool. Disable the reverb, let's try our echo. So again, you've got your feedback, which is gonna control the rate or the length of your echo and then your frequency, which is just the effect band that you're playing it to. Wet and dry. Everything's post fader, as you'd expect. And then below the wet and dry is your beats parameter button. So now we're at three quarter, one beat, half beat. And the 
echo also has the freeze effect. So if we increase the time, you press on the parameter button and you're engaging your freeze functionality, which again is a great and easy way to get in and out of tracks. So let's go through a few more effects. We've got delays. Hall echo, which is kind of a combination of the effect of delay as well as reverb, a little bit of reverb on it. Okay. And the decay is almost infinity. It's pretty close. So it will hold that decay out quite a long time until you manually bring it back in, which is cool. Uh, next effect is the ping pong, which is gonna uh, send the, set, the effect back and forth to your left and right channel. Which is hard to translate here because I'm sure we're running everything in mono, so I'm not sure if you're hearing that correctly on your side. We'll go to the auto gate. Again, you can adjust the frequency that it's applied to. Give it a half beat. Next effect would be the flanger. Bring the beat timing a little larger there. Wet and dry. Flanger sound is really nice when you've got it covering the entire frequency spectrum there. But you can also dial that in. Adjust the beats. All right, so let's jump back over to the uh, Q&A. So we've got Matt C from Facebook. He says, can you make it easier to add album artwork within Engine Prime management software? I tried this week. My track's ready, but needed to use different program from iTunes. Again, that is uh, something that we plan to address very soon within the software. So yes, absolutely. It's on our list. We want to make it as easy as possible for you to grab the artwork that you want drag and drop it and add it to your music. So great suggestion um, and thanks for bringing it up. We will absolutely uh, improve that within the software. So thank you again. So Damien asks, can you change the view of the waveform? Probably one of the most popular ones. Um, right now at launch, we're supporting the vertical waveforms or cascading waveforms. Uh, but right now we're, we've, you know, the buzz from NAMM, everybody wanted the horizontal waveform view. So we're looking into that now. Um, can't say you know when it's coming, but it's definitely on our list and it's something that we're actively looking at. So hopefully soon. Let me uh, audition a few more of the effects. Actually, go back to questions before I do that. So Frank from Facebook asks, hey Jason, great device. Are the internals the same as the 8000s hardware or is this all from the ground up a new build? It, this is an absolutely brand new product, brand new design, brand new mixer design brand new effects design. Everything on the Prime 4 is three and a half to four years in the making. This is all brand new technology. So it's the latest and greatest. Uh, not to say that the MCX-8000 is not as good as the, the Prime 4, but this is using today's latest technology, latest A to D converters. So the sound is gonna be crystal clear. Um, and it was based, you know, a lot of our foundation is based on previous products because the sound is, is one of the things that we cherish so much about our products. So. Yeah, it was based around the same thing, but the design, the layout, the components are all the latest in today's technology. So you won't have to worry there. So I will go back to the effects now. Next, we got a fil filter LFO. Again, you can adjust the resonance of the filter. Covering all bands there. Got your beat time division at the end it over all the effects or all the frequency bands. Next up we've got a phaser. Bit crush. We've got bit crush 32 beats there. Can adjust the average, make it sound really gritty.
adjust the frequency, bring the average down a little bit. All right, so the next question, Tony asks, can you replace the crossfader and the channel faders? So you can replace, uh, the user can replace the crossfader. There are uh, four screws on the top here. I believe those are eight millimeter screws. So you can use uh, an eight millimeter Allen key to remove this crossfader plate. And then below that, we'll have, you'll have access to the crossfader body. So that's 100% user replaceable. It looks like we will also be um, uh, capable of supporting a mini innovator. So if you've got a mini innovator, all you'll need is the adapter kit, and it should work and fit in there without any problems. The channel faders are a little bit of a different story, but we don't expect you to be replacing or need to replace them anytime soon. They are very high quality. They have a nice, really nice resistance to them. Um, but if they do need service, you know all of our service centers will be prepared to, uh, to handle the repairs as needed. Uh, next question, Patrick from Facebook. He says, when using with Serato, will you be able to use Serato on one deck and music from your USB stick on the other player, or do you have to use Serato only? It's a great question. So with Prime 4, it's a little bit different than the way we did things on the MCX. Uh, so when Prime 4 system goes into Serato mode, it changes the entire, the entire mode of the device. So you will be only able to use Serato or Engine Prime at a time and not both in combination with each other. But since the Prime 4 has a four channel digital mixer, you still have access to line inputs uh, from the front. So if you need to run a secondary source, say an iPad, a media player, you can still use that. So for instance, if you had an SE5000 or a 5000M, you connect that to the back of the mixer, set one of your decks to line, and you can still use engine software in conjunction with your Serato set setup. So great question, and it's handled a little differently than it was on the MCX, just because you know this is an entirely different beast. Uh, it's 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 a very powerful system, and its first intended use case is obviously standalone. So, all right, I'm gonna go back into the effects. We got a few more to show you here. Let me change out this audio. It's getting a little dull. So let's grab this track, DJ Taco. All right, so next up on the effects list is the roll. Roll is very similar to the pads but you just have access to it where you can fine tune where it's applied to a particular frequency band. Uh, Joseph asks, will you be able to enable MIDI via Denon link? So I'm, th I'm thinking the question is MIDI with Denon Link. So Prime 4 sends, sends and receives MIDI only over USB at the moment, um, but we do have plans in the near future to add support for connecting external modular devices to the Prime 4 in a different way um, rather than your typical MIDI. Can't say too much more, but we're definitely thinking in that direction. So it's a great question. And uh, yeah, I think you'll be pleased with uh, the, the feature as it comes. All right, so go back to the effects again. We did the roll. Reverse roll, pretty much the same thing. Just plays it in reverse, so we get a bigger time division here. Again, applying it to a particular frequency bands. Next effect, we've got the beat break. This one's actually a lot of fun. So I'm gonna leave this on 100% wet and over all the frequency bands. It's kind of like a stutter effect just to kind of allow you to manipulate the music or change it up a little bit on the fly. And you can change the patterns as well. Really cool, if you had a loop going, I could see a lot of guys using this to, to build up their tracks. Um, transition in and out of tracks. Beat break is a lot of fun to use. The next is the scrap effect. Similar to the reverse, you're, you're just pulling the audio back and scratch at different time divisions. Again, apply it to different frequency bands. So it sounds a little nicer when you just add the scratch to like the high end. And 
next effect is the uh, reverb. Actually, we already went through them all. So those are the current effects on the Prime 4. Again, you've got those beautiful, crisp OLED displays there. The effects are all internal, they're digital, and there's definitely uh, the possibility to add and improve on the current effects that we have there in the future. Uh, so, oh, yeah, so the next question was, will there be more effects added within time? And I think I just answered that. Uh, if you guys have suggestions of what effects you'd like to hear or see on the Prime 4, send them our way, add them to the comments. We're uh, keeping track of all this stuff, and it's definitely possible. Prime 4 is very, very powerful. Uh, there's a lot that we plan to do with it. You know, at launch, when you guys get your hands on this, you're going to fall in love with the features that are already there. But man, we've got a lot of stuff coming in the future. So. Um, yeah, you'll have to stay tuned. Um, so we talked about the effects one and two on the top, but in addition to those effects, oh, by the way, those are enabled with the effects enable or effects send here at the top of the mixer channel, either one or two. And so you can apply either one or two, but they are only one or the other. In combination to those effects though, we have our sweep effects and those again are all post fader as well. So this is an echo. Different time divisions, no matter which way you pull it. Watch out, which is gonna be a, like an echo out effect. Your left turn is gonna be your half beat. You can also just quickly press the button to get out of the effect. allows you to kind of get different rhythmic patterns with the effect. And then your right turn is your one beat. And then the last sweep effect is a noise buildup. Noise is also cool to use on a channel that you're not using for audio. Again, those are just nice ways that you can kind of get in or add certain elements to your tracks. Uh, next question, I hope I don't butcher the name. Desani from Facebook asks, what about supported audio formats? Great question. Uh, the Prime 4 handles pretty much any audio format you throw at it. We support WAV, we support FLAC, we support um, OGG, we support uh, obviously MP3. MP4 as well. Uh, for the full list, uh, definitely check out the website under the product page, under the specifications. It will list out all the supported formats. I think I listed them all, but I may have left one or more out. Again, uh, pretty much any audio format out there, the Prime 4 supports it. Aaron says, I'm a big fan of har harmony mixing. How do you use BPM and key filters under the utilities to match, uh, to find matching or compatible tracks? Awesome question. I also am a fan of harmonic mixing, so let me show you a couple of ways that I use the Prime 4. So, first off the bat, you can choose the way that you the key is displayed. So I use the Camelot, so you can see I've got 12B, 7A, 8A, 6A on the decks loaded right now. I can change the way that that is actually shown and expressed by going into the preferences, swipe all the way down to the bottom, and you see here under library, key notation. So right now it's expressed in Camelot, but I can change that to open key. I can change it to flats or sharps if you're you know, used to a more classical way of mixing and listening to your music. And as soon as I jump out of that window, you can see now the tracks have all changed. So I've got E, I've got D minor, A minor, and G minor on the decks. I'm gonna put it back into Camelot. Just for my reference, it's a little bit easier. That's what I understand. So Camelot. And the next option you have under the library is the key filter. So you choose what you want the Prime 4 to narrow your results down to. Do you only want to see keys that match? Uh, so that means exactly 8A is only going to show you or return results within 8A, or do you want to see compatible? Prime 4 already does all the math in the background, so we're going to do all the hard work and the heavy lifting for you. 
and then we'll just return all those results of keys that are just compatible with the key that you're currently selected. So if I go into the library, I go under the key filter here, or the filters, and this is where you can dial in. So for instance, go into my keys. Well, I want to mix maybe in 10A. So when I chose the option in the preferences, remember, if I go back, I'll show you. I chose, where is it? Key filter set to compatible. So that means all the results that come back are going to be compatible with 10A. So all of these are either one above or one below 10A when it comes to Camelot mixing. Uh, and then I can further tweak or you know, tailor this list by BPM. I can sort it. So now I can sort all these options. Again, you pull in from the outside. You can quickly swipe up a long list, which is super useful. And now we can say, hey, we're, we're playing in you know, 113, 114 range. Give me just the tracks that are going to harmonically mix. And you can find them right there. And again, if you want to add the track, you know, maybe you want to play it later, swipe it over to the left, add it to prepare folder, jump into your prepare folder, and those tracks that we just selected and swiped over to the left are there. So let's go back to the menu while we're waiting for some more questions. I'll show you some more options that we've got. Tons of options here. You know, one of the things that we really try to do is is we build products, but we build the products for you so that you know, when you're in your environment, when you're at your venue or wherever it may be, we want to give you all the tools that you need to get the job done uh, most efficiently. And so that starts with a lot of the under the hood options. So first you see the playback options. You know, when a track loads to the deck, where does the, the track load to? Does it load to the cue position or does it load to the track start? Your default speed range when you're adjusting or making pitch adjustments. Uh, sync mode, there's three types of sync mode. Uh, you can sync by bar, which is going to snap everything in line with the bar, or you can sync by beat, which is just going to nudge or pull your tracks within the, the next closest beat, and then tempo, which is just going to snap to the, the tempo of the opposing deck. You've got sync button action. That means, you know, do you want to only be able to disable your sync button with holding shift, or can you, do you want to quickly just tap it and turn it off? For me, I just want to quickly get in and out of it, so I choose toggle. Pitch control type. So there's two buttons below the pitch fader. You can actually change the functionality of these buttons. So by default, they're set to pitch bends, but you can also set them to range, which allows you to quickly set the pitch bend range without having to press and hold shift as well. Um, let me jump over to the first question, or the next question. Patrick from Facebook asks, with Serato, will the Serato effects be displayed on the effects section of Prime 4, or will it be internal effects? Uh, so well, when it's in Prime 4, or I'm sorry, when it's in Serato mode, it will be using all the Serato effects. Again, when you make those transitions out of the Prime 4 standalone functionality over to Serato, it's a hard switch. You're using the Serato, you're using the power of your computer when it goes into controller mode, and then when you go back, everything is powered by Prime 4 and the hardware at that point. Uh, maybe to further expand on your question, the displays will show you the information in which Serato provides. So if your effects are uh, clean echo out or break echo, whatever effect you're using within Serato, those effects will be displayed on the OLEDs rather than the effects that are built in internally. Uh, Mark asks, will Virtual DJ work with this? Uh, it will. We just actually sent them the hardware. We're working with them now. There was a lot of interest in work, uh, you know, users wanting this to work with Virtual DJ. So yes, we, you know, one of the things that we do at, at Den and DJ is we, we try to work with as many software partners as possible uh, just to kind of expand it. And again, you know, there's lots of different DJs out there, DJs that work in different environments, different workflows, different softwares, different applications. So it's important to us to make sure that we're catering to everyone. So yeah, absolutely, Virtual DJ is on our list and we're working with them right now. So great question. Uh, still going down my preferences list here, we've got the cue and loop quantization. So that means, you know, when I'm triggering my hot cues and my loops, how quickly is it going to react or respond? Is it going to snap to the one beat, the half beat, the quarter? Obviously, the lower the value here, the tighter the response is going to be, the more uh, human uh, it will feel. But if you want to play it safe, you know, and make sure that everything is on that first downbeat, maybe you want to set your quantization to one. Pause hot cue behavior. This is how the hot cues fire. So if I can give you a real world example of that, 
Right now I've got this, these cues are set to momentary, so they're only playing when I have my finger held down. So as I remove it, the track stops. If I set that to trigger now, it's gonna take off as soon as I hit the cue. And then it will just start playing back. Uh, below that is the default loop size, which is great. I often use this for beat jumping because our beat jump system is tied to the loop size. So if I set this to eight or 16, every time I load a track, a new track to the deck, go back to the main view here. Maybe I change my loop size to two. Once I load a new track, you can see up in the right corner that was changed to 16, which is super handy because I don't know if you've ever ran into this situation where you're looping, you know, you're looping out of a track, you got the filter, you're done with that song, you mix in the next, and then you go to load the next track in, and all of a sudden, your loops, you go to set a loop, and your loop size is at that small, you know, 30 second um, timing, and it sounds terrible, and the mix is thrown off. This is a protection measure. Now you're loading at 16, or whatever that preference is, as soon as you, um, whatever you select here, that's what your uh, deck is gonna reset to on track load. Uh, Christian from Facebook asks, hello, what format I need on the hard disk? So the Prime 4 supports uh, FAT32 and also XFAT. So either one of those, you'll be fine. It does not support NTFS or the Apple format for uh, Mac Journalize or Journalize Extended. So FAT32 or XFAT. If you're using a larger drive or a solid state drive, we would recommend that you use XFAT. Uh, PJ from Facebook asks, what is the warranty that comes with the product? So I can only speak for the warranty within the United States, and it is one year warranty in the United States. Uh, go back to the menus here. So we've got default loop size, smart loops. Smart loops, again, is gonna snap everything to your quantized value. Move cue to loop in. That means that when you loop for the first time, it's gonna move your initial cue to that marker. Some DJs work in that workflow, so we gave them that option. Uh, display, so track title. This shows you your metadata, or it will show you just the file name. Um, I use the metadata option because it, you know, it's, it's more rich. It gives you a lot more information here. So if you were only showing the, uh, let's see, preferences. And we go to file name, then it will only show us just the file name of those tracks and without any of the nice metadata options, um, which is a little less useful, but some people want to see the file name and sort by the file name, uh, so we understand that. Um, set that back to metadata. The time format, this is, just means that when you're playing a deck, you can expand the time, or that the time will change based on your pitch fader position. So if you're slowing the deck down, you've got it really pushed. Actually, let me just show you. I'll put it to dynamic. Jump out of this menu, set it back to center. And you'll notice here is our time. You can just tap that and you can get between elapsed time or remaining. And if I push the pitch fader, let me get a bigger range, plus or minus 20. As soon as I push this, and it shows me my time again, you notice the time changed, so we've added time to the track by slowing it. So that's what the dynamic um, time value means. I typically just leave mine at static. Track end warning, that means you know when this track is about to end, how, you know, how long before the track ends do I want this to flash? So there's a feature built into the Prime 4 that will flash this jog wheel LED here when the track is about to end, just to kind of give you a visual you know, reference of when the track is ending. So if I seek through, let me just pause the deck, seek towards the end. Once it hits that 30 second threshold, You notice that the deck here starts to flash between the color that you've selected and white indicating the track's about to end. So again, you can just set that to your desired length. Now let's see what it goes to. All the way up to a minute and a half, 90 seconds. The default is uh, 30 seconds. Uh, On air mode, again, another feature that kind of is, is a protection measure. 
just to let you know that, hey, this track is actually playing out to the audience. So currently, this deck is not playing right now. It's indicated with a white ring. So that means there's no audio going out, out of my masters to my crowd on the dance floor. As soon as I push this fader up, the color changes to your deck preference color, let it, indicating that you now have a live deck. All right, before I go into the next features, let's go back to the questions. Rolands asks, what is the effective throughput speed of the internal SATA connector? Ooh, that's a tough one. I'll have to get with the engineering team and get you the, the hard data on that one. I don't have those uh, right in front of me right now. Apologize. Uh, it's fast. It's pretty damn fast. Um, Matt C. from Facebook asks, can you use the dual sources simultaneously? For example, a track from a USB stick on deck A and a track from an internal hard drive on deck B. Currently, you can only have one source selected, um, but it is a great feature and I could see a lot of people using that. So we'll add it to the list and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see if, if, if it's something that we could possibly add in the future for sure. All right, let's just wrap up the preferences panel here. So now we're looking at our safety features, lock the playing deck. That pretty much means that it's not gonna allow you to load to it. Jump out. As soon as I try and load to the deck, it's saying, hey, pause this deck before you can load it. As soon as I stop it, then I can load. Again, a protection measure, just, you know, we've all been there. You've loaded to that live deck before and everyone's like, yo, what, what just happened? So uh, again, it's just something to protect you as a DJ. Let's go down, we've got a few more. Uh, needle lock on or off, that means that you can can or cannot touch the needle lock or the swiping while the track is playing live. So now I've got it turned off and I can swipe through. I'm gonna turn it on. It will tell me to pause the deck. So again, it's all preference. You know, how much protection do you want? You know, if, if you have all these safety features on, you really limit yourself to what could go wrong at a show, which is great. Jump back in, we'll finish up these preferences and I'll jump to the next question. Uh, padlock on or off. Uh, so if you wanted to disable these pads, if this is too much going on down here for you, you can turn those off and all the pads are completely off, which limits you to, you know, transport controls, pitch bending, track skipping, beat jumping, but none of the performance features, the hot cues, the loops, the rolls are active anymore. Again, another protection feature. Below that are some options for your library. We talked about the key notation. Um, you know, we show it, express it in whatever way you wanna see it. Again, that's all done in the background for you. Your key filter, compatible or matching. BPM range, so this is, you know, it really depends on how you play your tracks. My, most of my music is within 68 to 135, but if you're playing, you know, drum and bass or different types of genres, you might use one of these other options. Uh, BPM filter tolerance. This is cool. I usually use three or five, plus or minus three or five on this. And again, this is gonna return those results. So I selected plus or minus five here. If I go back into my list in the filters, go to my BPM and say we're playing at 90 BPM. Now it's only gonna show me tracks that are within plus or minus five of that. So it's going up to um, 95 and down to 80, uh, 85. Uh, let's see, a couple more options in the preferences. Oh, just the deck colors. Uh, so this is cool, you can choose the color of your deck. And you notice as soon as I change the color, the uh, corresponding Q channel, the channel Q button lights up with that color you selected as well as your platter color. Uh, again, that just kind of helps you identify where you are, but if you wanted to set it to all one color, you can use that as a, um, a feature to, for your branding. All right, jumping back to the questions. Uh, release date. So the release date it is, you're expecting it to start shipping at the end of March, early April. So right around that time frame, spring will be um, the expected release. Uh, Simon from Facebook asks, if the unit freezes when playing, is there a soft restart so the mixer still functions using a line um, from phone while sorting it out, or do you need to turn the whole thing on and off? 
Great question. I haven't run into the device freezing, but the mixer is completely separate. It is a digital mixer. So if something wasn't responding on the DJ application, the mixer itself still functions. You can still send your iPhone or your tablet audio uh, directly through the mixer without having any of the DJ app functionality going. All right, so let's jump into the utility. Again, we love options. We love giving you guys lots of ways to customize the device. Um, so the utility, again, you can hear, you can turn off decks three and four. If I turn them off while I have things loaded, again, it's protecting you. Do you really want to do this? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, screen brightness, you can choose you know, low, mid, high, depending on where you are, maybe in a sunny environment or in a nightclub, which is a darker environment, maybe you want to tone it down a little bit. Uh, mixer settings. These are some of my favorite features here because uh, as a mobile guy, I use a lot of these and they often change depending on you know, what type of wireless mic system I'm using, what is the venue, um, how big is the room, all those different variables. And these mixer settings will really allow you to tweak the sound and tailor it to uh, your event. So my talk over level, obviously the talk over you know, is the, adjust the music down below your voice when you're speaking. So how much do you want that uh, volume to duck down below your voice? We give you all the way from negative uh, 20 all the way down to negative 40 dB. The talk over resume, do you want it to respond fast or normal to the way after you finish speaking? Uh, the fast for me is, is what I find to work the best. They're both, they're both pr fairly quick, but the, the fast is almost an instant. As soon as you stop, you know, the, that last word that you say on the microphone, that music comes right in. The microphone attenuation, again, there's a lot of different mic systems out there. You know, they, they often have different levels. So, you know, being able to set this, the attenuation here, but also having a level control on the, the device itself are very, very useful. Um, again, because you never know what type of mic system you're gonna be dealing with and how hot those outputs are gonna be from the mic itself. So, again, just more fine tuning. Send the mic to the booth. Do you want the microphone to go into your booth? You can choose and turn that on or off. Send your main mix to the zone output. So this is on by default. The Prime 4 has the, the zone output, which will allow you to send all of your music into a completely separate room. But you can also just disable that if you wanted to. Uh, I'm not sure why you'd want to use that. Maybe you're not using it as a zone. Maybe you're using it as a secondary booth monitor. Uh, the options are really endless. It's up to you and how you use the device. The, the zone also allows you to assign a specific channel to the, um, to the zone. So right now I've got everything turned off, but if I t press the zone channel assign, it's gonna say, hey, do I wanna use channel four to send uh, music to it? If I say continue, I go into my library here, and now I have this new option, send to zone. So maybe I like this uh, deep and funky playlist and I just want to send this out to my cocktail lounge. As soon as I do that, everything will go into the um, zone out. So that's shown there. Zone out and it's got all the tracks listed and those will play back to back to back. And at the top of the device, you've got individual uh, level control for that zone as well as a two band EQ to kind of tailor it to the room as necessary. Uh, jumping back to the questions, we've got Steve and he says, does the zone have a separate mic channel? How can I hook up effects units or drum machines? All right, so there's two questions here. The first question, does the zone out have separate mic channels? It does not. The zone, when using it as to mirror the master, all of your mics that are sent to your master will go out to your zone as well. How can I hook up effects units or drum machines? So a couple of different ways. If you wanted to hook up uh, a drum machine, you can just come into the back of the, the rear panel. There's four inputs. The inputs there are line or phono. So you can you know, use it with a, a vinyl turntable or your um, line level media player. It's really up to you. And again, just to, to switch from engine, the standalone, or those um, external devices, there's a switch right on the front of the mixer. Um, hook up effects units. You could hook up an effects unit if you ran, uh, I guess you could, use, you could use the zone as an effects unit, but you'd have to run it to a secondary mixer. So you'd have your zone mirroring the master, you'd have your effects box in between that, and then that secondary mixer would be your main feed going into the club. So you could add those effects layers on top of the main uh, Prime 4 audio. DJ Kiki's from Facebook asks, I wanted to know more about the jog wheels, tension sensitivity, how can you describe it? Low, medium, or high? 
So the jog wheels, they're very, very smooth. Uh, we had a lot of positive feedback on them at NAM. Um, if I can just do a quick backspin, I'll give you an idea of what they, uh, they feel, what they sound like or how many rotations you get. All right, so if I just rotate. Oh, let me jump into the track a little bit more. I mean, they're kind of right in the middle for me. They're not too heavy, they're not too light. So yeah, they're, it's hard to describe. I guess it's one of those things that you kind of have to put your hands on it and feel for yourself. But for me, they feel, you know, for a six inch platter, they feel pretty, um, pretty good. Let me jump into the menu here. All right, Jeremy from Facebook asks, can screen color be inverted? Uh, no, but great question. Again, that's one of those things where if you, I can see that being necessary if you were in a, um, a really light environment, um, a lot of sunlight coming in and maybe it's hard to see the blacks. So having that inverted would be very um, useful. It's not something that's currently possible, but again, great feedback, keep it coming in. We're taking a record of all this stuff and all the, the feature suggestions. So. Uh, it's something that we could possibly add in the future. Tom asks, will the screen be replaceable if it breaks? Uh, absolutely, service centers will be prepared to replace the screens. Uh, I don't think it's something you'd want to take on yourself, but uh, yeah, absolutely, uh, the service centers will be able to replace that. We do ship, I don't have it with me here, I probably should have. We're, we're shipping the product with a nice hard shell protective screen cover to kind of protect it as you're transporting it to and from your, um, your gigs. So uh, that added safety measure to kind of protect your investment as well. And I, I would really hope, you know, that everyone puts these into a, a hard shell case, you know, when transporting it anyway. And we've worked, uh, or we're currently working with Odyssey, UDG, uh, as well as ProX on making sure that cases are available as soon as these products hit the street. So you won't have to worry about, you know, lugging this thing around without uh, protecting it. Angelo from Facebook asks, in the record function, is the microphone sound recorded too? Yes, absolutely. Uh, that was a big one for me too. Being a mobile guy, you know, doing weddings, speeches, uh, ceremonies, you know, just having the ability to capture the vocals or the, um, you know, anyone that's speaking is very important. So your customer could come up, say, hey, could you quickly, you know, could you record um, the, uh, the best man and the, and the maid of honor speeches for us? And sure, pop the drive in press record, select that drive as your source, and all the microphones will be recorded as well. All right. So I wanted to go through the rest of these uh, settings here on the utility. So we talked about the sending the uh, mic to the booth, sending your main mix to your zone out, EQ types for your mixer here, so you can choose between isolation and normal. Isolate just really defines, you know, it's, it's a more uh, old school way of mixing. You can isolate particular frequency bands, and this is where you set those crossovers here. Um, or you, you, would, you would use the normal, which bypasses those um, frequency settings there. You can choose the filter resonance. Um, you can set it to a very harsh setting or a very light. You can choose the filter extreme type, the noise, sweep volume, your headphone gain, Q solo mode. So if you want the Q button to follow you around everywhere you go, which is super useful, you can choose that setting there. If you turn that off, you'll be able to queue up multiple channels at a time. Um, but I recently found that uh, the Q solo mode is very useful for me mixing. Uh, and then down below that, you have your device info. You've got um, obviously the model is the Prime 4. You've got an option there to check for updates if you were connected to the internet via the ethernet. It shows you all of your firmware versions. And then this is how you would put your device into update mode from uh, update mode from here. Just click the reboot on the um, the update page, and it would put into update mode. All right, so we got two more questions coming in. What is the preference on type of internal hard drive? Uh, I would suggest uh, a SATA drive, obviously SSD. Uh, it's a 2.5 inch SATA drive, so make sure you get a uh, SSD. It's going to give you the fastest response when you're searching for things. 
uh, making sure that you can hold all your music and your, all your returns when you're searching are going to be coming up very fast. So definitely get your hands on a solid state drive. They're not that expensive these days. Uh, I think uh, there's a 500 in here and you can find them for a little less than $100. So yeah, definitely um, solid state drive for sure. I, I can't really suggest a particular brand, although I know that SanDisk works well. There's Samsung or other options. OCZ is another option. There's there's lots of options out there. So just uh, you know, check on your um, your retailer online to see which one works best for your price budget. All right, we got one more question coming in. Can you show can you show two deck playing? Yeah. So right now. We've got the, the four decks. If we just press shift plus deck four or deck three, we can clear this out. And now we can only see both of those decks that are playing. Oops, jump back a little bit. And it's a nice clean two deck view with a mini library in the center. So it's a nice clean look. You can use your outside decks for your iPad or your tablet or whatever, whatever it may be. But yeah, that's the two deck refined view. All right, guys, I think that's all the time we have for today. We're definitely going to do this a lot more op op a lot more often, and we appreciate you guys stopping in and, and taking the time to give us the feedback on the product and all the future suggestions. We're definitely listen listening, so thank you so much for stopping in, and we'll catch you on the next live stream. See ya. Bye. Still alive?